Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Kimran Biscocho, here to discuss about the spiderweb DNA, a new spin on non-invasive genetics of predator and prey. This is our chosen article to review because it has something to do with animal genetics and evolution. Here we're going to talk about the DNA present in the web of the spider and some stuff which relates to the evolution of spiders and its products such as the web and the importance of the non-invasive approach in conducting such research or experiment. For the abstract, this paper describes a novel and promising source of non-invasive spider and insect DNA from spider webs by using non-invasive genetic sampling which enables biomonitoring without the need to directly observe or disturb the, the target organisms. What is non-invasive sampling? Non-invasive sampling has also been defined as a genetic sampling approach in which animals deposit samples without being caught or disturbed by the researchers. It comes from the word not invading, and a good example here is how the researchers can study about the web without touching the spider. That way, the, natur the natural flow of wildlife may still go on and that's a good thing because there is a less risk of harm from the side of the animals and the researchers. For the second and third abstract, using black widow spiders or Latrodectus spp, the scientific name, fed with house crickets, Akita domesticus, they successfully extracted amplified and sequenced mitochondrial DNA from the web samples that identified both spider and prey to species. Detectability of spider DNA did not differ between assays with amplicon sizes from 135 to 497 base pairs. Spider and prey DNA remained detectable at least 88 days after living organisms were no longer present on the web. Meaning, um, the mitochondrial DNA or mtDNA is the product from converting energy from food by the mitochondria, which cells can use. The spider eats the cricket, and the mtDNA is extracted from the web, meaning the structure of the web may vary depending on, on what the spider would eat or if the spider would eat something which will explain why the web is identified as both spiders to prey DNA. And this is all possible because of the amplicon size. Amplicon size is a way to determine the base composition of DNA by amplifying and reinserting a section of chromosal DNA in a genome. And for the fourth abstract, Spider web as proof of concept may open doors to other practical applications in conservation research, pest management, biogeography studies, and biodiversity assessment. Uh, here is the black widow spider, the cricket, and the web. For the objectives of this study or article, to find the important usage of spider web DNA, explain DNA itself comes from the silk of the spider being studied. Understand more about spider species that will contribute to the spider biogeography studies. We'll see more information of their objectives in the data and results and conclusion part of this article review. For the materials and methods, Here we have web collection, DNA extraction, primer design, and DNA amplification. For the web collection, here are the steps in web collecting. There are three female southern black widow spiders. They are put into three separate enclosures with their own decontaminated branch for the purpose of web building. After web construction, each spider was fed two medium sized crickets by dropping them into the web. Web samples were collected from each enclosure 11 days after 
the spider introduction. Here after referred to as L Mac one, L Mac two, and L Mac three. The uh, this is the experiment name for the three black widow spiders. All web samples were collected by twisting single-use sterile plastic applicator to spool six strands. No organism, body parts, or exuvia were visible in the web samples, but cricket parts and spider fesses were clearly evident on the floor of the enclosures. Applicator tips were snipped into 1.5 ml microcentrifuge tubes using bleach decontaminated scissors and stored at 20 degree Celsius. Um, this is the figure inside the enclosure, the black widow, the cricket, the web to be collected. Next for the DNA extraction. Here are the DNA degrading conditions that the web would stand in order for the DNA to get extracted. That's the harsh conditions that the web will need to come through. Okay, for the primer designed, and that's the primer design. PCR primer designed to amplify the cytochrome C oxidase subunit gene of target species. Okay. Here we see the amplicon size again. Amplicon size is a way to determine the base composition of DNA by amplifying and reinserting a section of chromosal DNA into a genome. For the DNA amplification, the production of multiple copies of sequence of DNA, yun, the, the multiple copies of sequence of DNA or repeated copying of piece of DNA. DNA amplification means repeated copying of a piece of DNA. And we have here the data and results. Data and result. All extraction and PCR negative controls produce no amplification. Using the nested primer sets, we successfully amplified 135 BP, 257 BP, and 311 BP and 497 BP of Latrodectus SPP or the Black Widow Spider. CO1 from web DNA samples. Um, we see here for amplicon size instead of three because there is a test run of the said experiment. They just happen to put that test run on the other black widow spider. Amplicon size had no effect on the PCR success based on the number of successful PCR, and which replicates ANOVA for the F1.941 degrees of freedom 3 and P0.194. We also successfully amplified a 248 BP of Akita domesticus. And there is an amplicon size of the cricket on the web. So meaning, because the spider eats the cricket, there may be at least a portion of its DNA when it produces webs. Both PCR duplicates from all four web samples amplified successfully, and all resu resulting DNA sequences were confirmed by the NCBI blast and the bold eads to be a dom domesticus. The zoo ex exhibit web sample, Les Zoo, was collected 88 days after the death and removal of both spider and prey, demonstrating substantial persistence of web DNA. All DNA sequences generated in this study are provided in the second table. Meaning, even after 88 days, and the uh, spider and cricket is removed, their DNA will remain in, still remains in that web even after 88 days. And that's the data and results. 
for the figure 2, success at different applicant size in detecting the cytochrome C oxidase unit, subunit of Black Widow from web samples. Percent success calculated from number of successful PCRs out of 10 technical replicates. Error bars represent a one standard of error. And we have the conclusion. Conclusion. Important usage of spiderweb DNA. And we can see this in the objectives which they have been proven. Certain black widow spiders like the species used in this study are common venomous pests. And spiderweb DNA could be particularly useful surveillance tool. Meaning, in short, spider webs can be helpful in determining if a spider is venomous or not. For the next one, spider web DNA could also help monitor low density populations and determine invasion fronts of invasive widow spiders, such as the brown widow, also known as Latrodectus geometricus in Southern California, and the Australian red buck, also known as Latrodectus hasselti in the New Zealand and Japan. Besides pests and invasive species, many spiders like the katipo, Latrodectus katipo, are threatened or endangered. Next, for the spider of DNA, spider of DNA could be particularly useful in rapidly providing occurrence and gener genetic diversity data for this rare species of concern. Meaning, in a spider web, a DNA from other D invasive species may get stuck on it. Let's just let's say the spider, the spi spider's wounds can be in the web from the part beaten or blood dripping from the spider web when a fight started, it may stick onto the web as stated from the study. The DNA may be there for 88 days, even when there is no more spider or any other species detected on that web. Meaning a web or web DNA may help monitor who or what caused their population to shrink. And for the next, Explain if DNA itself comes from the silk of the spider being studied. Um, we saw this at the objectives. It has been proven in the conclusion. Um, because black widow spiders are cobweb spiders that generate large three-dimensional cobwebs consisting of sheets dotted with glued droplets, they were ideal to use in this experiment. Although spider silk could be considered a form of spider tissue, Spider silk fibers are composed of tightly bound B-sheet proteins that exclude water molecules and do not dissolve under the proteinase K treatment of standard DNA extraction protocols. Um, the, the web um, has passed through many harsh treatment conditions. Thus, we hypothesize that most spider red DNA originates either from microscopic Copic pieces of fecal matter, sete, and XQVA adhered to silk strands, or directly from the silk gland ex exudate, which may contain cells shed from silk glands. To explain, the web of the black spider compared to others are much bigger and stronger, which explains their ideal to use in these experiments. Extracting DNA requires protocols such as DNA degrading conditions like heat, moisture, and light. And because of the strength of this web, it also survives being mixed with other chemicals, helping the researchers determine the origin of spider web DNA, meaning the web of Black Widow is strong enough to withstand the DNA degrading conditions, um, being exposed to chemicals. So that's why it's ideal to use. Um, the Black Widow's web is ideal, ideal to use in this experiment other than the other spiders. In conclusion, we provide the proof of concept that non-invasive DNA of a spider and its prey can be extracted from spider web and be used for species identification. 
Spiderweb DNA appears to be a promising tool with wide applications in biomonitoring, biogeography, and biodiversity assessments of spiders and their prey, especially if combined with the power of massively parallel sequencing. This article has been a part of many biogeography studies. Uh, meaning, this study helps to understand more about spider species that will contribute to the spider biogeography studies. And here are the references. We have 56 in total, if I'm not mistaken. 57. And that's all for our lecture for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have learned something from me. Thank you.